So this is the small molecule NMR facility core. Uh, currently, we have four spectrometers in this facility. Uh, where we have a main facility which is located in the basement of the math building, that's Stevenson Center 1. We also have another spectrometer located in the new MRB4 building on the 12th floor. So currently we have, a th uh, in this facility, we have magnets ranging from 300 to 600 megahertz, all from uh, Brooker Biospin. And so the spectrometers are all the same in both facilities, which uh, makes it easier for students uh, who learn software on one spectrometer. They could also learn the uh, software on other spectrometers in the facility. We service uh, all of the campus primarily for users that we consider small molecules, people that don't look at proteins or large molecules, people that need smaller blocks of times, or people that are uh, a little bit uh, sample limited. And so those are the main users that we service in this facility core. This is our 300 megahertz spectrometer. It's uh, currently uh, mainly dedicated to walk-up type applications. That is for students who have samples that are fairly concentrated and only require uh, 10 or 15 minutes of acquisition time. This spectrometer is set up to uh, acquire proton, carbon, phosphorus, and fluorine NMR in a automated uh, fashion in terms of the users aren't really required to move any cables or adjust any of the electro uh, electronic components in order to observe these uh, nuclei. Okay, we have a student that's currently acquiring a, spectro a spectrum, a uh, proton spectrum. Uh, what they're working on right now is called a process uh, shimming. And what that process involves is every time we put a sample in the magnetic field, we disrupt the homogeneity of the magnetic field, and so we have to re-optimize the homogeneity of the magnetic field. Uh, this process is done automatically by the computer, and so the student just sets the parameters up correctly, and the spectrometer by itself automatically optimizes the homogeneity of the NMR field. This is our 400 megahertz spectrometer. It's also primarily uh, dedicated to uh, what we consider walk-up time or high throughput sampling. Uh, students who are typically uh, concentrated for both proton and carbon uh, access this spectrometer. As you can see, we also have what's called a sample changer or a, a 60 sample sample changer for the spectrometer. So every afternoon at four o'clock, we switch over the operation of the spectrometer to the sample changer. So students just come on down, they enter information on the, in, in the computer in terms of what type of experiment they want to run, how long they would like to run it, and then the sample changer automatically puts the sample in the magnet, runs the spectrum for it, and adjusts the sample, and it also sends the student a copy, a PDF copy of the spectrum so they could take a quick look at it to determine whether uh, they have made a, a compound they're looking for or whether they need uh, to rerun a reaction or whether they uh, actually need to acquire the spectrum for a longer period of time. Uh, once again, we, we focus on this uh, spect uh, spectrometer uh, for short acquisitions, uh, optimized for proton, uh, and, and, and also we're able to observe any, any nuclei from phosphorus 31 down to silver 29. So odd NMR nuclei such as silicon 29, nitrogen 15, or any other type of uh, nuclei that has got an NMR active isotope can be acquired on this spectrometer. This is a 500 megahertz NMR spectrometer. It's currently optimized for uh, proton sensitivity. So students who need more time than our walk-up time, uh, they need more than 15 or 20 minutes uh, if they would like to do a variable temperature experiment or if they would like to do some type of two-dimensional NMR experiment. This is typically the spectrometer that they run on. Uh, it is, uh, although it's optimized for proton sensitivity, it's also capable of acquiring phosphorus carbon, and nitrogen-15 NMR as well. This is uh, a 600 megahertz spectrometer. This is the newest spectrometer in the facility. This is the latest Brooker, what's called an AV3 type console. And as you can see, it's equipped with a uh, cryoprobe. Now the cryoprobe is important for proton sensitivity. Uh, traditionally, the main problem with NMR has been sensitivity, uh, especially noise associated with the NMR experiment, what we call thermal noise. So this cryoprobe accessory works by cooling the important NMR uh, components that we use to detect the signal, namely the NMR coil and the proton preamplifier to liquid helium type uh, temperatures, which is around 23 Kelvin. 
Once they're cooled to that temperature, the source of thermal noise is removed, and so we enhance the signal uh, in, in intensity by a factor of four in some cases on organic solvents. And so what this does is gives us the ability to go from milligrams of material down to the micrograms, and in some cases the high nanograms in terms of the uh, proton detection limits. The other unique thing about the spectrometer is we have it hooked up in line with an LC SPE unit. So we could do traditional type of uh, liquid chromatography and take whatever comes off the, uh, the liquid chrom chromatogram and send it directly to the NMR in real time. Applications for this would be uh, the case where you have a sample that is not very stable, uh, something that's going to decompose in an hour or so, we could go directly from the HPLC to the NMR in real time. And this is accomplished by using an insert into the NMR spectrometer, which is essentially a flow cell. And as you can see, this accessory contains a flow cell in it. And so we put this accessory in the top of the magnet, and then we f are able to flow directly from the HPLC right to the NMR. Now, the main drawback with this type of technology is that to do the direct flow requires using deuterated solvents. And as we know, that deuterated solvents can be expensive. And so the alternative is if your material is not uh, going to decompose and if it's relatively stable, we could actually send it from the HPLC and trap it onto a solid phase extraction station. This solid phase extraction station, it works like a mini uh, column. It actually traps the material on the column. And then we could, at that point, we could use protonated uh, HPLC solvents. Whereas in the case of going directly from the HPLC to the NMR, we're restricted by having one of the solvents, namely the uh, aqueous phase, having a deuterated source in it. And that could be expensive if the runs get to be uh, very lengthy. Um, by going to the solid phase extractor, we could use traditional proton-based or protonated solvents. Uh, once we trap the material on the solid phase extraction cartridges, we could dry the cartridges down and remove the source of uh, protonated solvents, and then we could elute them with a very small amount of deuterated solvent either directly to the NMR via our uh, um, flow cell, or we could actually send it over and load NMR tubes uh, using a, the Gilson sample handler. Now, we're able to trap up to 96 peaks at a time. We have 96 uh, cartridges that are available, and we're able to send them over to the uh, NMR spectrometer or to the Gilson um, liquid handler in an automated fashion. And so students or, or users aren't responsible for uh, you know, uh, manually uh, transferring the samples. It's all done under automated uh, system. Now, the other advantage we have is that we could take the um, NMR spectra in small diameter NMR tubes. So we could use a three millimeter NMR tube, which holds about 125 microliters of uh, material, or we could use a 1.7 millimeter NMR tube, which holds about 45 microliters. So keeping the mass constant and adjusting the volume, we could actually make more concentrated samples. So we couple the concentration effect of uh, samples that we produce from the LC-SPE with the cryoprobe, and that increases our sensitivity by another factor. And so we could get up to about a factor of five, and in some cases a factor of six, increase in sensitivity over normal traditional NMR uh, uh, spectra that are run on uh, instruments that do not have this cryoprobe or LCSPE uh, accessory. I'm here now in our uh, satellite facility located in MRB4 on the 12th floor. Uh, this is a 400 megahertz uh, Brooker spectrometer. And as you can see, it also has the um, back 60 sample changer on it. The sample changer, once again, comes on at 4 o'clock every afternoon, and it offers our users the ability to just put samples on the, on the uh, changer, enter some data into the software, and have the instrument automatically record their NMR spectra, whether it be proton, carbon, phosphorus. This spectrometer, once again, is uh, capable of observing any nuclei from phosphorus 31 down to silver uh, uh, 19. And so it's what we call a broadband probe, 
and so we're able to run any type of NMR active nuclei that a, a user would be interested in acquiring. The Small Molecule Facility offers a wide variety of things on, the, on its website. We offer uh, training classes in both one-dimensional and two-dimensional NMR. These training classes uh, are offered several times a year and they focus on the practical aspects of NMR spectroscopy. Actually sitting down on the spectrometer and learning how to acquire a 1D spectrum or sitting down on the spectrometer and learning how to acquire a 2D spectrum. Uh, new users to the facility, our website also offers information on how to request an account in terms of what information we require for people, for new users to access the facility. Uh, the, the website also contains information about uh, reserving time on the different spectrometers. Uh, essentially, we have our time that's uh, divided into what we call open time, which is available up to a week in advance, and walk-on time, which is only available on that particular day. And different spectrometers have got a uh, combination of walk-on time and open time, depending upon the application for that specific uh, uh, spectrometer. For more information, we could be located at uh, SiteMason, dot vanderbilt dot edu slash a n n m r